so very much uh, for having me here today. To the best of my ability, I'm going to try and explain to you four absolutely unprecedented, ridiculously complicated years in American politics. My area of focus and expertise is campaign management. Our campaigns last as long as people have money to spend. And so that's a lot now. Uh, the current president, Barack Obama, has a mil uh, actually a billion dollars uh, in the bank. Uh, and that's probably what it's going to take for him to get reelected. I can tell you, uh, as a political science professor, in 2004, uh, when Bush won re-election, Barack Obama gave the keynote address, or one of the keynote addresses, at the Democratic Convention. And I had several of my students say to me in 2004, oh, Professor Johnson, isn't this great? This Barack Obama guy, he gave a speech, and we're really excited. Do you think he might be president one day? And I said, no, of course not. You go back and talk to your parents, and you tell me that the people who raised you are going to vote for a black man to be president of the United States, okay? Uh, and I was proven wrong. One, he was black. And, and the truth of the matter is, African Americans are still viewed fairly poorly in the United States. Oh, we can all say what kind of nice progressive things we want, and there's Oprah, and there's, there's Diddy, and there's Wyclef, and there's Kanye, and Beyonce, and all that stuff is cute. But the fact of the matter is, your average American, day in and day out, your average white American does not have an opinion of African Americans that is equal. And that is the case in this country, as the case in the United States, it will probably be the case for a very long time. Plus, he had the name Barack Obama, which doesn't sound normal to most Americans who like names like John and Joe and Mitt and Newt. Jason um, Johnson. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, Jason. Uh, next, there was his resume. Okay, and relatively speaking, he had a paper-thin resume, okay? Barack Obama had been a senator for about two years in the federal government. He had worked as a community organizer. Yes, he went to Harvard. Yes, he was a smart guy, but most people who run for president of the United States, they're older, they've been in Congress, they've been governors for a long time, and he didn't have any of those things going for him. And generally speaking, in the United States, we don't elect people from Congress. We elect governors, or we elect people who are vice president. Then there was the timing, okay? Heading into the 2008 presidential election, this was an open election in the United States. So what does that mean? That means that the incumbent can't run again. That means anybody can run. That means you've got a field of about 16 people when this all started. Okay? And it was believed that Barack Obama was too young and the field was too wide for him to really have much of a chance. Then there's the structure. The primary process is very expensive and it's long and it's complicated in the United States and it requires you to go through all 50 states. So a lot of people didn't think, look, this guy, he, he can't even get through the structure. And then the last great difficulty Barack Obama faced was Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton's wife. This was her job. She had been wanting to do this her whole life. If she could have done it without Bill Clinton, she would have. So the truth is, a lot of people just didn't think Obama had much of a chance. How did this end up happening? How did we end up getting a man who was an African-American with a funny name and a bad resume beating one of the most powerful political families in the United States? We well, had two very critical events that happened during their primary. Right after Barack Obama won the South Carolina primary, Bill Clinton, Hillary's husband, came out and said, well, Jesse Jackson won in South Carolina, too. That doesn't mean anything, okay? This offended a lot of people. This offended white people. This offended black people. This offended tons of Americans who felt like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Jesse Jackson, that was 20 years ago. Why is he mentioning Jesse Jackson? Just because they both happen to be black? Jesse Jackson wasn't even supporting Barack Obama. He didn't like him. And it was seen as sort of race hustling on the part of Bill Clinton. Let me mention someone else black in order to alienate white voters from voting for this black man who's running against my wife. If Obama was a white man, he would not be in this position. And if he was a woman, he would not be in this position. He happens to be very lucky to be who he is, and the country is caught up in the concept. The irony of saying that a black man with a paper-thin resume and a funny name is lucky to be in this position running for president of the United States is amazing. Um, but Geraldine Ferraro, who was a supporter of Hillary Clinton and had been a vice presidential nominee in 1988, came out and said this, and these two statements fundamentally transformed the race for Barack Obama. It brought many white liberals to his side, it brought many independents to his side, and it actually galvanized his support amongst African American voters who initially were more likely to vote for Hillary Clinton than they were to vote for him. What we saw throughout the campaign is that rather than actually focusing on criti criticizing Barack Obama on legitimate mistakes that he made, most of the white candidates just couldn't help passing up on racial issues. And that eventually allowed him to stay focused, stay on message, and become president of the United States.
If you take a look at these numbers, Obama got 96% of African Americans, 67% of Latinos, 63% of Asians, and 43% of white Americans. That resulted in him getting about 53% of the popular vote and becoming President of the United States. Okay? Now, why is this significant if we go back to Geraldine Ferraro in 1988? Had Barack Obama gotten those exact same numbers in 1988, he would have lost the elections. Barack Obama didn't just capture the White House because he ran a good campaign. He captured the White House because he's cresting on a wave of demographic changes in our country that are going to make the whole place look very, very different in the next couple of years. Not at all. In fact, Barack Obama faces some really, really unique challenges, not only in running for re-election, but also throughout his four years in office. The population changes in the country are probably going to help him. As we move forward, the Republican Party is increasingly old and white and southern, and that's not what America is looking like. America is young and brown and tan and moving throughout the Sun Belt. That will help Obama this fall. It may help future Democrats later on. The expectations throughout the Obama presidency have been ridiculous. People thought he was going to wave a magic wand and fix things. I don't know why anyone thought that. I never believed it. Um, and that has nothing to do with supporting him or not supporting him. It's just that the problems that the country faces extended much beyond anything that he could have done when he initially got into office. But the expectations on the part of black Americans, the expectations on the part of white Americans, have been a huge albatross around his neck throughout his presidency. <coughs> The Obama presidency is a presidency that is still in flux. His relationship with African Americans is much stronger now than it even was when he got elected initially because he is desperately dependent on black votes to get reelected. How we will be able to evaluate his full impact on black history is not something that we can see right now. But if he gets reelected in the fall and during the Q&A, I'll tell you if that's likely, we'll definitely be able to get a chance to see if he was just at a moment in time in black history or he fundamentally changes black history for the rest of our lives. Thank you.